Hello everyone and welcome to the Breeze Sports Center. I'm Bradford Ambrose. Today I'm joined by Wayne Epps Jr. and Chase Kitty, sports editors at the Breeze. Today we're going to uh, first start to uh, talk about um, the game against GSU on Saturday. Uh, Wayne, kind of talk about what you saw in that game. Um, I saw, again, the offense is still still struggling. Uh, even when Michael Burson getting his first start, uh, still sputtering along is the word that, that uh, Matthews used. Um, and uh, But Burson played pretty well, but again, he's a true freshman, so uh, he's still young and he still has time to grow. Uh, so what he played pretty well for his first start, um, Daquan Scott carried the offense. He had uh, like over 130 uh, rushing yards, two touchdowns, a season high. So um, offense definitely has room for improvement. The defense looked better, better pass for us, three sacks on the game. Um, so definitely room for, imp for improvement, but uh, I think we'll be okay moving forward. All right, and Chase, go ahead and talk about what you saw in that game also. I think the biggest thing that I saw was Michael Birdsong really struggled, as you would expect, in uh, decision-making. His pacing was a little bit off in terms of how long it took him to make decisions. You'd often see him approach the line of scrimmage, but sort of hesitate on should he tuck the ball and run, should he throw the ball to his receiver. It, you know, he, he missed a couple wide-open receivers. Uh, there were also some times where he hit him on the chest and they just dropped the ball. You saw... Uh, late in the first half, Orlandis Harvey just gave one up, and it ended up being Michael Birdsong's first interception. But, uh, I mean, I think all in all, uh, it definitely – I mean, they came out with a win. So, you you can't be too hard on them, but there's definitely room for improvement, I think, is the takeaway. And um, So, let's go ahead and talk about the upcoming, uh, upcoming game this weekend against Maine um, and, and – what you all think the the Dukes kind of need to improve on, improve on, and, and kind of predictions about that game. Um, I think Jerry definitely again needs to improve on the cohesiveness of their offense. Um, I think with another week under his belt, uh, with the first team, Burson is going to uh, be making a decision a little bit quicker and things like that. Uh, I think the defense will still come out strong again. I think they'll keep improving. Um, Maine is at, sitting at, at uh, three and five right now, but uh, Matthew said they're a better team than, than their record. Um, they're a pretty solid team. They have one of the best quarterbacks in the league, um, and Marcus Wasilewski. Um, so uh, I think they, I think they're coming out play pretty well. Again, they, they're still improving, but um, I think you'll see a, a nice showing on uh, on Saturday. And Chase. I think the key matchup is the uh, the the main passing game versus the JMU secondary. We've seen all year the JMU secondary really give up really easy six and seven yard passes. They're not afraid to give up small passes to the outside to any team really, and that's really what Maine thrived off of. They had all kinds of passes uh, plays like that last year in a game where they actually won in overtime here in Bridgeforth Stadium. So I think the the defense is really going to have to play a little bit tighter. You see guys like cornerback Ryan Smith going to have to step up in the secondary to make plays, and then the offense. Michael Birdsong is going to have to play a little bit better than he did last week, but they're also going to have to get contributions from guys that might not normally be making plays. Daquan Scott's expected to be limited with a shoulder and uh, high ankle issue that he's dealing. He's been dealing with a high ankle sprain since the Alcorn State game. He a uh, recurring shoulder injury is now nagging him uh, after last week's game versus Georgia State. So they're definitely going to have to get contributions from guys like Jordan Anderson. All right, and let's let's go ahead and shift gears. Uh, men's and women's basketball seasons are starting to ramp up. Let's go ahead and talk about that, Wayne. Uh, well, men's basketball is kind of a, a, a crapshoot of where they're going to finish the season. Um, they're, they're bringing back a, a really rare experienced team. Um, they might, might be starting all seniors this year, um, but uh, uh, they can finish anywhere between anywhere from the bottom of the league to towards the top. So uh, it's really going to be uh, up. We really have to wait till the season starts to see how that that works works out. Um, the women's team is bringing back another good team. Their experience as well. Um, they have their first scrimmage on Saturday, so we'll see uh, their first um, showing on, on that this weekend. Uh, but again, they should be again towards the top of the league in, in CA for that. So uh, I think it'll be a pretty good season for both teams. Yeah, the women here at JMU always feel a very competitive team, and I, I expect them to finish at or very close to the top of the CAA. As for the men. Uh, I expect them to play very hard for Matt Brady entering the final fifth year of his contract. He's playing for his career here at JMU. Uh, a lot of fans like him, but he's definitely experienced some, uh, some setbacks. Two of his four seasons here have been losing seasons, just completely ravaged by injuries in both of those seasons. And Sitting with a record right at 500, he's going to need contributions from all of his seniors uh, on a team that is just as talented as any other in the CAA. 
let's go into field hockey. Field hockey is going into playoff seasons. Uh, Wayne, Chase, let's go ahead and talk about that uh, team and you know where, where you think they're going to end up. Uh, well, field hockey is going in the, in the fourth seed in the CA tournament. They're going to be playing Hostra on uh, tomorrow on Friday, on November second, and uh, uh, they they have a strong team. I think they they have a chance to contend. Um, they've been struggling a little bit at times throughout the season, being kind of in, inconsistent. Uh, but uh, I think that they'll have a, a solid team, and I think they have a good shot coming out in the tournament this weekend. Uh, similar to what Wayne said, field hockey definitely one of the better teams in the CAA, but by no means the best. They're capable of winning the whole thing, but they really have their work cut out for them uh, if they're going to win the whole thing. They've got talent. They've gotten some of the better teams here at home. They've beaten a couple of the better teams, but they, they really have their work cut out for them if they want to win the tournament. Thank you guys for joining me once again. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Bradford Ambrose. See you next time.